Hey, hi there. Um, it's been a while since I put one of these up. The last, and actually my first one that I did was for Kale. And uh, this time, um, I had some people over uh, on uh, the weekend, and I served this appetizer. And the appetizer is uh, stuffed dates. They're stuffed with goat cheese. And um, it was really good. People really liked it. In fact, um, someone asked me for the recipe. So, uh, Michelle, this is for you. Um, and uh, I'm just going to quickly go through the ingredients. It's really simple for the stuffed dates. Uh, you will want about one pound of um, hmm, medjool dates. <laughs> I don't know if I pronounced that right, but that's what they are. Uh, about a pound of them. Uh, the other thing you'll want is I used uh, smoked prosciutto. Uh, you can use any brand you want, but uh, one pack at least. Uh, you will want soft, unripened goat's cheese. And a pepper grinder and I use like a gourmet blend there's like three or four different peppercorns but regular black pepper is fine um, but I do like to use a pepper grinder it's a Peugeot it's some kind of uh, a finely engineered uh, mechanism from the France uh, that they use to grind it and uh, I got yelled at at a kitchen shop actually um, by a woman who saw me turning the top back and forth and she goes no 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 you will ruin it it's finely machined you turn it one way only and then she took it from my hand and put it back on the shelf so uh, i was told anyway uh back to this uh the med uh med <laughs> i'm having trouble saying it the med jewel dates uh, are these, they're the fairly big ones. Uh, you can buy them in the grocery store, uh, usually around the produce section, maybe in the bulk food, but uh, in a one pound pack is usually about enough. It'll yield about 20 to 30 of these appetizers. Now, the ingredients, because you're talking prosciutto and dates and other things, are a little exotic. So they're going to be about, budget about a dollar each uh, to make them. Having said that, uh, let's get to it. It's pretty straightforward. So what you're going to do, I'm going to just put this down so you can see, uh, is you're going to take one of the dates and you're going to take a sharp knife. And you're just going to run it the length of the date like this. You're going to split it open with your fingers and pull out the seed. Now the seed sometimes has some extra fiber or um, I don't know what you want to call it, bark. And sometimes you'll see just inside the date there'll be a little bit of extra fiber. That's a little tough and chewy. So if you see a lot of it, you can just pull it out like stringing something. Okay, it just pulls out. Your fingers will get sticky while you're doing this. And no problem. It's very hands-on. I believe in hands uh, touching food as long as you wash your hands first because it's a couple of reasons. One, it's the right thing to do. Two, it's cold and flu season and you really don't want to be passing any of those things along. Okay, this one has a fair amount of fiber in it. So again, take out the seed, then you can take a look if you want at removing the fiber. So I'm not gonna do all 20 of these. I'm only gonna do four, right? So once you get that one, I have one done already. Two more, one more. Okay, fairly easy. Next step, once you've got all of them seeded, you will take some of the goat's cheese. And uh, I use about um, a little over 100 grams of it in total. And um, what you'll want is a fork and you're just gonna mash it up a bit so that it's kind of crumbled, okay, like so sort of get kind of crumbly, uh, a bit like uh, feta cheese that way. And then the pepper, and I just put a little bit of pepper. Um, my buddy Jerry was the one who gave me this recipe, and when I first tried them out, um, I thought they were remarkably sweet. Uh, the dates have a lot of sugar in them. The goat's cheese is a bit tangy, and the prosciutto is also a little on the sweet side. So. I put in a little bit of black pepper, just some savory to balance things out. 
The next step, once you have it all sort of blended, is to take a small amount, um, roughly, I don't know, this much, and it goes just in the middle of the date, and then you just simply close it and wipe off any excess. Okay, so you're going to do this about 20, 30 times. I'll do four of them, which is what I promised I would do. So more cheese, just put it in. When it closes, yes, there will be some excess. You can stuff them as full or not as you want. It's up to you. The amount of cheese will have some influence on the flavor of them, but I mean, no two are going to be identical, right? And it's not an exact science. It's cooking. So put these together. Once you've got all of these with the cheese filling, okay, um, we're going to wrap them with the prosciutto. So I'm just going to clean up this little bit of extra cheese here. Rinse my hands. Now, the prosciutto I buy is smoked prosciutto. And um, I like it because, uh, well, when Terry made them, he actually said you should use bacon. That was the original recipe, but he thought that was a bit mm, not quite right for today's world. So he went with smoked prosciutto, and the result is quite good. So as you can see, the prosciutto itself is quite wide. Um, so I actually slice it in half lengthwise, again with our sharp knife. Hopefully, it will slice there. So um, you've essentially doubled <laughs> the uh, number of prosciutto slices you have available. And of course, this knife still has a bit of cheese on it, so it's not slicing super well. But that's all right. So I now have four pieces of prosciutto, which are <laughs> about the width of a bacon strip. Now, you simply take the date and the prosciutto, and it'll probably wrap around the date a couple times, no worries. You'll end up with something like that. Fairly straightforward. One. and so on until you've got them all wrapped. Now, I found that one pack of prosciutto was not exactly enough for all of the dates that I happen to have. So you might want an emergency uh, second pack of prosciutto, um, just in case. So I've got the four of them done up. I'll end up with a whole bunch, like 20. I'm actually making these for real because uh, actually there's a ski patrol thing happening tonight. Uh, well, not tonight, sorry, Saturday night. And I thought I'd bring them along. So once you have them all lined up, you can put them in a container. Uh, I would keep them for a maximum of a couple of days. And just before you're going to serve them, uh, put them in an oven at 275 degrees, so just like a warm oven, for about anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes uh, until they're nice and warm. And when I put them in the oven, uh, I just put them on a baking tray with some parchment paper on it so that they don't stick. And that, uh, I had, I, I managed to sneak one away um, at the party where I first served these, and uh, they are really, really good. So um, I hope you enjoy this, and uh, take care.